Councillor Alan Tewson. Councillors, good evening and welcome to this extraordinary meeting of Melton Borough Council. Evacuation procedure. In the event of having to evacuate the council chamber, please leave by one of the six emergency exits around the sides of the chamber. Please assemble at the far side of the front car park nearest to the park entrance. Officers will be on hand to assist persons who require any assistance. Public recording of the meeting. There is legislation that allows the public to film, record or use social media at a council meeting. This must not be disruptive to the good order of the meeting, nor include any filming or recording of the public seating area. Please switch mobile phones to silent. Microphones. Councillors and officers are reminded to use their microphones when speaking for the benefit of all present. I'd now like to ask Pastor Neil Sweatingham to offer prayers. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. I was going to start by inviting us all to stand in silence for a moment as a mark of respect to Queen Elizabeth and just to give each of us the opportunity to recall our own recollections and impressions of the late Queen. For many, the Queen was a symbol of stability and continuity in a period of radical change. Pete Gregg, the founder of the 24-7 prayer movement, said last week she was one of the world's most famous and faithful Christian leaders. As someone who modelled consistency, faithful service and integrity, yet who was also able to adapt to changing times and demonstrate a capacity for personal growth and lifelong learning, Queen Elizabeth was an impressive example of what it looks like to follow Jesus. She said, for me, the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I try to lead my life. Queen Elizabeth died as she lived, following Jesus, the one who made this promise to all who put their trust in him. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, King of Kings, we give you thanks today for the life and faith of your servant Elizabeth. We pray for her son, King Charles, that he too will follow you faithfully and acknowledge his personal accountability before you. And as countless people reflect on Elizabeth's life and legacy over the coming days, may we be inspired to live for you in the service of others for as long as we may live. Amen. Thank you.
Item number one, apologies for absence. Apologies for absence have been received from councillors Binloss, Cumbers, Glancy, Higgins, Wood and Douglas. Has anybody else got any other apologies? Thank you. Declarations of interest. If any members would like to indicate that they have an interest to declare, could they please do so by raising their hand? Another registrable interest in respect of County Councillors Orson and Posnet are taken as being on record for any matters which relate to Leicestershire County Council. Please note, a member with a registrable or non-registrable interest must declare the interest and consider in accordance with the Code of Conduct whether they are able to take part in the debate and vote. Item three. I would like to thank all those members who attended the reading of the proclamation on Sunday the event was well attended and a fitting tribute to the ascension of King Charles III. Please note that the Book of Condolence is open this evening until the end of tonight's meeting, should anyone wish to sign it. I would like to ask all present to join me now to observe two minute silence to reflect on the lifetime of service which her late majesty devoted to the United Kingdom, the realms and territories, and to the Commonwealth. Can we all stand, please? Thank you. There is one motion to hear this evening. An address to His Majesty King Charles III, Councillor Orson, to outline the motion, please. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr Mayor. I was, yes, I um, 
we'll move the motion. It's on page three um, of the Blue Water paper. I will read it out in full, which is not my normal style, but I think for those who aren't in, have the advantage of actually having a motion in front of them, it, it may be useful. For the mayor to confirm the outcome, that the mayor on behalf of the members and officers at Melton Borough Council expresses our deepest sadness and grief at the death of Her Majesty the Queen and convey our sincere condolences to His Majesty the King and members of the Royal Family. That Melton Borough Council recognises the strong and steadfast presence Her Majesty has provided for over 70 years and acknowledges with gratitude her incredible dedication to this country and the Commonwealth, as well as the enduring legacy of selfless public service. That the members and officers of the Council congratulate His Majesty King Charles III on his accession to the throne and wish him a long and happy reign. Long live the King. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, just to say a few words, there's so many words being spoken since last Thursday, it's very difficult to find something fresh, but I'll try and put a bit of a my own personal flavour into this. And when I first heard the news at 6.30 last Thursday that the Queen had died, I wasn't surprised. Um, she was 96. But I was <clears throat> massively shocked. Um, I was born in 51. I'm one of a small number of people now who have lived actually under two monarchs. There's a few in this room as well with me, um, but we keep getting fewer each year. Obviously, she took the succession of the throne in June 1952. Queen Elizabeth has reigned for 70 years, and I somehow couldn't accept that she had died. And she had become a type of motherly head of state for me. And it was the same when my parents died, the same feeling. And I just couldn't believe my parents would die. And I couldn't believe the Queen could die. It was that sort of, as Liz Truss said, a rock. She was always going to be there. I'm sure we are going to hear members' personal experiences of meetings with the Queen and also King Charles I, III. But for me, I only saw and met, well, I didn't even meet uh, the Queen, really. I just saw her once in 2018. It was at the garden party at Buckingham Palace. I do understand it. It was a very last appearance at Buckingham Palace. And she was about six foot away from me. And I can guarantee there was no eye contact whatsoever. But at least I did see the Queen. Um, it, what was quite interesting about that was, and I do have this on video, she was followed by Prince William, who was talking to Princess Beatrice. And you could hear them very easily what they were talking about. And they were talking about the advantages of contactless card payments. And uh, maybe something you'd only imagine the rules uh, it, the royal family getting involved with, but that's what they were talking about. The Queen played many parts and on a national stage. I believe with her huge experience, she developed into what I call a step back. As the chief executive will know, and many of my cabinet members, let's sleep on it. As I mentioned before, Liz Truss called her a rock. She came to symbolize the nation's thoughts and certainly in the depths of COVID on the 5th of April, 2020, uh, Her Majesty at the age of 93 made a highly rarely broadcast to her nation to rally the public in the face of the coronavirus outbreak. Some of, some of her um, people still call it, we will meet you again speech. I played it on YouTube this afternoon and it really is quite moving actually how she put it. On the world stage, I was massively impressed that in 2011, she visited Dublin Castle, which was the former headquarters of the British Army. And she was the first monarch to travel to Ireland for a state visit since the independence of Ireland or the Republic in 1922. She was invited to a state dinner in her honor, and she delivered a speech on relations between Ireland and the UK. And she even opened her speech in Irish, I remember. Now, what was most impressive uh, was just a few words that she said, and just to remind you all of what she actually said on that day. And most of us will go back to the troubles starting in the 60s and the pain, the grief and the damage that has caused to us all. But what she said on that day was, to all those who have suffered as a consequence of our troubled past, I extend my sincere thoughts and deep sympathy. 
with the benefit of historical hindsight, we can all see things which we would wish had been done differently or not at all. To me, that was a true leader. In 2012, she shook hands with Martin McGuinness, a former commander of the Irish Republican Army. With those words and actions, Mr. Mayor, the Queen moved the peace process on at some speed. And I can't tell you how proud I was with what she um, achieved on that day. Mr. Mayor, my knowledge of now King Charles III, I'm, I'm struggling with King Charles III, I've only been used to the first and the second. And just to remind everyone in history, the first and the second were really colorful um, kings. So let's hope, maybe hopeful this guy will follow in the same mode. Um, I have met King Charles on a couple of times. I even met Princess Di, and it was all back in the days of about 1980, a long, long time ago, when Charles, as Elaine will know, used to hunt with a corn on a Monday. And what we used to happen, the meat would say be called at Old Dolby or a Thought Satchel or wherever it's going to be. And uh, because of security, the prince would never, and Princess Anne was also involved, they would never go to the meat. So they would get changed in a, a local farm and enjoying the meat, shall we say, a mile away. So a couple of times, uh, Prince Charles came to the farm and got changed on one occasion. Princess Di was in the car, but she never got out the Range Rover. I have to say, by the way, I've never seen a Range Rover with so many aerials on in my life. It was absolutely smothered in them. Um, what I never quite understand about Prince Charles on that day is well, no huntsmen wear red and um, black. the followers wear black. Charles, if you remember, Elaine, always wore blue with a red lapel. Now, he told us all the reason was he got changed at the farm, didn't go to the beat, was security because he didn't want to be recognised. I never quite understand why he wore a blue tunic with a red lapel if he didn't want to be recognised. But um, I did ask him and didn't get a, an answer, to be fair. But, um, but it was interesting. Mr Mayor, uh, King Charles III must have had the longest apprenticeship I've ever known, 70 years it served him well, because judging by his display of selflessness over the past few days, it just goes it, an extraordinary display of selflessness Prince Charles has given. How he keeps going with the personal grief he must be struggling as well with, I, I don't know. He doesn't show it. So all I can do is congratulate His Majesty on his accession to the throne and long live the King, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to call on Councillor Graham to second, please. Mr. Mayor, I have much pleasure in seconding that. Would you like me to say my piece now or wait till the main? I'll go ahead. Um, Mr. Mayor, I suffered deja vu earlier this week when watching the Privy Council proclaiming our new king. We had two grandchildren staying and they would not shut up, however frustrated I got. Then I had a flashback to the 2nd of June, 1953, but obviously, because I was being noisy and disruptive, I was told to go and play in the garden so the grown-ups could continue to watch the coronation on the brand new black and white television that was so fuzzy. I seem to remember it convinced me it must be snowing in London. I was four, the same age as Archie, and that is one of my earlier memories and reminds me that Queen Elizabeth has been around all my conscious life. I've had several occasions on which I have sworn allegiance to her with pride. When looking back on my life after the death of my parents, the one constant that had been there since I can remember was Queen Elizabeth II. As we have seen, what a force she was, brilliant on formal occasions and informal ones, an enormous sense of humor, an interest in so many things. The interest that I shared with her as do Councillor Child and Councillor Holmes, was the love of racing. And I will miss her at her race course in June. A lesson that Councillor Holmes and I could learn from her is how to accept the ups and downs of the sport and not show disappointment when one does not win. We will never experience the excitement she showed when our horse estimate won the Ascot Gold Cup in 2013. But as she so wisely said, grief is a price you pay for love. She realized that it's only by having disappointments that you can find the exhilaration of winning. So I live in hope. I now have a monarch which is younger than myself, just. 
And I know the monarchy will change. And I'm sure that like those that I've seen with the Church of England and the Conservative Party, I will find those changes hard to accept. I will though always acknowledge what the country has shown over the last few days, that we are also incredibly lucky to live in a democracy with a monarch as our head of state. A queen is dead, long live the king. Thank you. Thank you. Now that to put it open to members, if anybody wishes to speak, could they raise the hand, please? <laughs> Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Firstly, I'd, I want to pay tribute to my colleague, Mel uh, Miller, niece Stedman, whose funeral it was yesterday. Before Councillor Webster's election last year, Mel and I would sit next to each other in this chamber. She'd always have something to say, and I'm sure colleagues across the chamber tonight will recall, she'll certainly always tell you exactly what she thought. I've missed Mel not being involved at <laughs> the council since earlier this year in our little chats. She'll be greatly missed by colleagues and residents and the residents of Longcorson and Stavon, who she fiercely represented since her election in 2019. Mr. Mayor, I want to extend my condolences to His Majesty the King and the rest of the royal family at this sad time. The Queen was an accidental monarch, becoming heir at the age of becoming heir to the throne at the age of 10 on, on the abdication of her uncle, King Edward VIII. She was a consequential monarch, the longest reign in history. It's beyond belief that her contemporaries as head of states upon her accession were Marshal Stalin and President Truman. And I recall my grandma telling me, much like Melise might remember, that as a child in 1953, they were the only house on their street that had a television and how half the street filled their tiny little living room to watch the coronation. My fondest memories have been of the three Jubilees that have taken, pl taken place over the last 20 or so years. We'll never see a platinum Jubilee again in our lifetimes. The event showed that the love that our country had for the Queen and the sense of community and patriotism that she inspired in all of us. The Queen was the personific personification of, our, of the nation. She had the unrivaled ability to unite the country and was a guide through tough times and good. And as we look now to the future, I wish the King every success in following the great, in following the great lead of his mother and simply say, God save the King. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Posnett, please. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, as like a lot of people in the council chamber, or let's say a lot, some of us, my first memory of the Queen is the coronation. I lived on a council estate. Nobody had got a television. But then a couple of days before the coronation was happening, one of our neighbours, and I think it was Radio Rental, they got this television. So come the day, there were about 20 of us squashed in their front room, looking at this 12-inch screen, as Meline says. It looked as if it was snowing, but, you know, we all came out of there. We've seen the coronation, and that's something that, that's always stayed with me. I met the Queen again in 1980 at an event in London for cancer research, and um, my mother-in-law went along because um, she used to run a group in Melton raising money for cancer research and whatever money they raised went to either Nottingham or Leicester hospitals or Nottingham or Leicester University dependent who wanted the money for the research they were doing at the time and so we were walking around the garden party and the queen was walking around and we came face to face with the queen and she asked us if we we're enjoying ourselves well I've never known my mother-in-law lost her ways before but she was totally silent, which anybody that knows her, that would be a very rare occasion. And so I said, yes, thank you, Your Majesty. It's a, a lovely afternoon. So she asked us, were we part of the organisation? So when we said what uh, my mother-in-law did, she turned to my mother-in-law and she said, well, thank you very much. It's not an easy job raising money, I'm sure. Well, my mother-in-law was like a dog with two tails. You know, the Queen said thank, thank you to her. You know, and I think she came back with a bit of vim and vigour to, to get fundraising again. But I have attended three garden parties at the Palace where I've actually seen her. But in 2015, I went to Buckingham Palace when I was honoured and privileged to receive my MBA from the then Prince of Wales, now King Charles III. 
And my, I took my three grandchildren with me. And afterwards, one of my granddaughters said, Mama, I thought you were going to be moved on. She said, you spoke to him a lot longer than anybody else. And I said, no, I wasn't speaking. It was him that was speaking to me. And when he knew that I came from Leicestershire, he said, I have got such fond memories of Leicestershire. And then we proceeded to talk about people that he knew in Leicestershire, about Ab Kettleby, um, you know, about his hunting. And he said, I will always have Leicestershire in a part of my heart. And I then moved on. And but that was that was nice to hear that um, it got those thoughts about less tributes that have been made to the Queen have all had the same statement running through them. Duty, dedication, humility and commonality. And I believe that that commonality is what has adhered adhe to people of this country in particular, because the Queen could speak to the man that's empty your, your bins just the same as she could the Lord. Lord somebody or other. She'd got that touch that she made people feel comfortable, you know, in her company. And I think as well as those att uh, attributes that endeared us to us, they've also endeared her to people all over the world. Rest in peace, Your Majesty. Your work is done. God save the King. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to ask Councillor Chandler, please. I was at school in Grantham when our headmistress walked in wearing cap and gown and announced quite bluntly, the king is dead. We watched the coronation of our queen the following year on our first television set, a 12 inch bush in black and white. Since that day, she has always been there giving us stability and continuity. Queen Elizabeth II was the first British monarch to be wholly above politics. Nations need non-political, ethical, steadfast figureheads they can believe in and trust. Queen Elizabeth provided this for 70 years. This is why our monarchy has always been the envy of the world. Moving on to King Charles III, like Councillor Orson, he uh, hunted on a Saturday in the beaver country and used uh, farms to um, change and have his horses uh, dropped off. And I got some friends where he asked if he could use the toilet. And ever since they've had a note in the, this outside toilet uh, used by Prince William, the Prince, the Prince of Wales. And it's always been a joke. And I, I don't know whether they're going to upgrade it now to the King Charles, but, uh, he, he was he loves to visit farms. I mean, I think Councillor Holmes and, and Councillor Orson will highlight that. And he's very well read and knows what he's talking about. <clears throat> I, I think the events of the past seven days have also highlighted how much the nation values the royal family. This was clearly shown on Friday evening in St. Paul's Cathedral, where the younger generation were there in great numbers, showing their support for King Charles III and the continuation of the monarchy. God save the King. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Illingworth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just making quick reference to uh, Councillor Orson's comment about it's strange to say King Charles III, we used to talk about the first and second. Can't quite remember, but for at least one of those, it didn't end well, did it? So, um, I'm going to do a quote from something quite up to, up to date. I don't know how many of my colleagues are addicts of the Game of Thrones series. Hopefully some of you are, so what I'm about to say might make some sense. There is the Night's Watch, which guards the wall that keeps all the baddies out from, from, from the goody land. And um, the Lord Commander in the series, Lord Mormont, passed away. And as was tradition, they, they had a funeral pyre. And uh, the words they speak at that was, uh, now his watch is over and we shall never see the like of him again. 
And I think that's a fairly apt tribute to the late Queen. We will never see her like again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Faulkner, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I never actually got to meet the Queen, although I did see her on several occasions at Royal Ascot, as driving up the strait. Uh, but I, uh, I, I do remember the first time I became aware of the Queen was when I was at school at Old Dolby, and the Royal Train had been in the station for the night, and we, we all stood on the uh, playground waving our hankies in the air as the train drove past. I don't know whether she saw us. We never saw her, but it was all, all felt very, very good. Uh, and I've got another slight anecdote regarding uh, King Charles III and the beaver hunt, uh, obviously when he was the, the Prince of Wales. Uh, uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law father from my first marriage lived at Hickling Pastures and uh, one, one Saturday afternoon, a horse box pulled up on the grass outside the house and her mother-in-law was rather incensed at this, so she went out to play merry hell with them, only to find that it was actually uh, the then Prince, Prince Charles uh, changing his horses. And uh, she, she didn't realise at first, but, but even when she did, she uh, didn't even apologise. <laughs> yeah, so, God save the King. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lumley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to uh, echo the comments um, said tonight by uh, councillors. Uh, very, very good comments and very, very moving. Um, I, I just wish to say, obviously, thank you to the uh, to the mayor and the council officers uh, since last Thursday or their preparation for Sunday's uh, Ascension announcement, which was very, very good and uh, very, very, very well organised. Um, I last, I think, the last time I saw the Queen actually in person, but she was quite away from me, was in back in August 1995, just along the River Thames, where she was coming off a, a, a boat, if I remember, and uh, she was with Prince Charles, and uh, everyone was taking photographs, etc. And that was a very uh, hot, hot summer as well. Um, just want to say actually as well, um, and I don't think this has been said actually on any of the, any of the re reports on the news, but I think when you are, when obviously Queen Elizabeth, um, she or she was on the throne for 70 years and every single day she had to dress smartly and go out and all these engagements, perhaps in the UK, all around the world. And it's quite a tough thing to do. I mean, I think if you're mayor for one year, I think those of you who have been there here, it is very, very tough. It's very, it's very draining after a while. I'm to meet people over quite a few, several hours. It's draining and it's, you know, it gets to you. And I think to do that for 70 years every day, I, I'm, I'm to do all the correspondence with, uh, with, uh, with like all of the red boxes. And not just that, when you have to make a speech to the world country, you have to get it right. You have to get the tone right, the, the words. And that's a, a really big thing. And, and I know she had, and no doubt King Charles III will have a, tr a lot of, of training, but it's still, you have to, you know, to, to, I think to go into that role, it's, you know, and, you know, in the royal family, you know, how it works, the throne, you know, you, you are pushed into it. And, you know, it's a quite, a, it's a, it, it is a very, very tough job. And I like to play tr tr tribute to that, for, you know, for 70 years, it's such a long time. Um, I think if I've got my um, statistics right, I think she's had... Uh, 15 prime ministers, um, 18 general elections, just stop to don't forget those, there, I think there were two general general elections back in 1974, so I've counted that. And uh, I think she's the first monarch, uh, monarch to die in Scotland since James V back in 1542. So quite, so over 500 years, so quite uh, um, I think they're saying on the news, actually, that uh, she, I think she may have wanted to actually pass in Scotland, pass away in Scotland, um, because she knew when her time was probably coming. And I think with the whole debate over the last quite a few years now about the, trying to hold on to the union, keep the union together, she wanted to make sure that um, like Scotland was in the spotlight and and the fact that, um, you know, the people of Scotland could see her. Um, see her outlining in state 
which is a really good thing to do. And it passed through very close areas of Scotland, Edinburgh, and also very close by. And actually to see yesterday, um, you know, her coughing travel from Edinburgh um, to uh, London, especially on the A40 um, arterial road into London, it was packed with people. So she was clearly uh, a very, very popular monarch. And, uh, you know, um, I think I think a lot of people on the news uh, journalists were saying it's very, very, you know, I, I don't think they're expecting the crowds, etc. I think they're expecting about 350,000 to queue now um, to see her, um, her lying estate back in Westminster. Um, so um, it's quite extraordinary. Um, I think um, certainly under Queen Victoria's time, I think the whole of the British Empire expanded to a third of the whole of the world. So it's a huge thing in the of her reign that that uh, that that was came short. But she she was obviously a great great monarch, and she was obviously very very well respected all around the world. Clearly, the comments coming in from different countries around the world, different leaders. Um, it's you know extremely highly respected. Just to echo, I think the words of Councillor Orson was that um, I think society from the, I think from the royal family of the years has, has been enshrined in us as people, and I think I think it's actually made us who we are. Um, and people saw the Queen um, as a as an actual grandmother figure, um, and people can obviously relate, you know, perhaps their family members to. Uh, you know, to their grandparents and, and their grandmother, etc. Um, and yeah, great, really great reign. And uh, I just want to thank you, thank her for, for, for all of her service and uh, God save the King, Prince Charles III. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Child, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Stunning garden parties and experience of a lifetime is how I, I will remember the late Queen. In 1992, I accompanied the then Mayor, John and Eva Stockley, to the Queen's garden party. And fortunately, 20 years later, I was able to attend yet again with my wife. That was the year of uh, uh, John White, and uh, it was very very fortunate when you see her you are in awe and she had an awe and a presence about her for someone so diminutive to have that command is astonishing i will remember her with fond memories she served the uk with immense dignity respect and selflessness over the course of her historic 70 year reign she was a shining example of utmost devotion, performing her duties with extraordinary grace, tirelessly until the very end. My thoughts go out to the royal family at this incredibly sad time. <clears throat> Thank you for a lifetime of service to the people of the UK, the Commonwealth and the world. God save the King. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members wish to say anything? Councillor Freer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just wanted to share um, my thoughts about the Queen. In uh, 2012, I was lucky enough to have dinner with the Queen and um, Prince Philip and um, Kate um, in Leicester. Um, I was as close to her as um, Chris. Um, is to be today. Um, she walked past me. She reminded me of my grandma. Um, they were quite the same height, the same build, um, and it was quite surreal. Um, I think my fondest memory and quite surreal moment was um, singing um, the national anthem to the Queen um, as the Queen's in the room and toasting the Queen as the Queen was there. It was quite surreal. Um, it, the, the funniest part was um, Prince Philip, who um, actually didn't want a glass of wine with his dinner. He wanted a pint of ale. So somebody from the room had to run down the road to a pub and 
get a pint of ale poured and run back quickly so that um, I won't repeat the words that he said, um, but he said, I'm not drinking that rubbish, um, get me some beer. And um, it was quite, it was a, a memory for me. Um, my other memory would, was a garden party like so many other people have been to. And um, I took my mother and her one wish was to stand on the steps where she'd seen so many royal people um, and, um, you know, guests. And that was for her, one of her best memories. And we got to see the royal family, but quite a way away. Um, but for me to be able to take my mum to, to do to that was quite, um, it was great. Um, my mum's 70 this year, the same as the Queen's reign. So she's quite proud of that. And she keeps telling everybody. Um, so um, I just wanted to share my memories of um, somebody that's been there my whole life. Um, and might share my condolences to the royal family and um, just um, echo um, God save the king. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members? Councillor Orson. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd like to wind up the debate, but I think you want to say something first, I think. I don't, I don't know, sure. Right. I've been writing all these things down. Uh, because so many things have come up as everybody's been speaking. My mother was an absolute royalist. We had to go everywhere. She had to go everywhere with her box brownie uh, if she was going to see the Queen or any member of the royal family. And one of the things I had to do um, at nine was go with her from Melton Station to see the lying in state of King George VI. I remember having to wait, can't remember much about it, but it seemed to be a very dull day. And then we walked round and we, and there was soldiers at each end in scarlet, I think, and that is all I can remember about it, but I know we had to go. Uh, but then when it came to the coronation, uh, I had an, an aunt and uncle, he was the accountant for Melton Farmers. <laughs> and so they had a television at Spinney Farm Melton. We didn't have water. We didn't have uh, running water, that was. We didn't have electricity and we didn't have a telephone in 1953. Uh, my father could never quite understand when we paid Mel Melton rates, but we didn't have any of those things. We did later on that year. So we had to go down to Stafford Avenue to watch um, the coronation. And my auntie Gert knew that I absolutely love spam sandwiches and Tizer, and I do remember that. Then we came back to Thorpe Arnold, uh, um, well, it was Sturton's Field, it was called then, the bottom of Thorpe Hill. It was pouring with rain, but I won half a crown and beat Margaret Sturton, uh, which, which I was delighted about. Then we went into the village hall, and we had tea, everybody had tea, and we were presented with um, a China mug. Now, I had that mug for years and years, and where it went to, I don't know, but that was one of the times, one of the days, which I thought was quite amazing, and you can always remember. Um, then, of course, uh, Prince Charles. Prince Charles, I've met many times hunting. Um, he, he was just a person who wanted to enjoy himself. I remember round Lord, Lord Elsford's cover one day, we were there and so I hope I'm not going on too long. I'm, I'm all right, good. Um, and he got a block, it was a, it was a mobile phone, but it was like a block thing on the side. He, he said, nobody can get me here. And it rang, didn't it? <laughs> and, and you felt so sorry for him, but the, um, the, the mayor, uh, who was Bob Hyslop, he, he actually hosted um, the, the now present king uh, because when, I can't remember, I just can't remember. Yeah, I do. Colonel Miller, who, who was the master of the horse, he used to ring up late at night and say, it was a Monday with corn country. Um, he'd, he'd ring on Sunday night and say, um, oh, we've got a special guest for you who's going to get changed. 
And so everybody was washing windows, helping doing things while we're washing windows at Bob Hyslop's at about one o'clock in the morning. I don't really know, but but that's what we had to do. Um, and but that the year that um, Bob Hyslop was mayor, that was the year we had the Queen visit Melton, the first and only time that she's visited Melton. Uh, I was the deputy to him. We all stood near the, it wasn't there then, but the, um, on High Street uh, in a sort of a semicircle, there was a town estate and there was, there was the councillors and everybody. Anyway, I hadn't got my chain on or anything because it was his day. So I was just standing at the side. He saw me and he, he, came, he came across and said, Your Majesty, uh, ma'am, ma'am, as in jam, um, this is my deputy. And she, she came across, I tried curtsy and a hand shot out. And this lady said, uh, I'm, I'm, Alderman, um, I'm, I'm Alderman Green's widow, um, uh, uh, um, very nice to meet you. And, and the Queen sort of said there, she said, oh, yes, very nice to meet you. And I just, and we, and we just said, said um, yes, Your Majesty, and, and she moved on. The next year, I was very fortunate to, when I was mayor, to go to Beaver Castle. And we were standing in a line because the Queen had come because it was uh, some sort of military um, don't know what it was but it was something military and it was at beaver castle we were still, still along the line and she said to me oh the mayor of melton i said yes your majesty we have met before and she said of course oh yes wasn't that funny that lady doing that that was a year later how could she remember so you always remember these absolutely marvelous things I do hope and I do think everybody realises how dreadfully difficult this has been also for Princess Anne because I've met her many times, various things in Melton and um, with Riding for the Disabled and I think she has been an absolutely wonderful lady when she came of course to the cattle market as well and they have lost their mother and I think it has been a very, very difficult time for all of them, but God save our King. I know he will do an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Do you I, I'd just like to um, wind up the debate with you, okay, um, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, say thank you to Team Melbourne Council. Um, when you think it's been quite a it's a week in history that I don't think any of us could have ever predicted when you take yourself back to last Monday morning. Since then, we've had a new prime minister, had a new cabinet. The queen died. We've got a new king. Absolutely traumatic what's happened uh, all in four days. Team Meltborough Council picked up um, the effort on, on Thursday as soon as the news came through, a little bit before, I would imagine, as well, and started planning. The event that you hosted on Sunday went without an absolute hitch. I've watched it on YouTube, Alan, and credit to you and credit to the officers for arranging it so well. Credit to the officers and team at Borough Council for arranging tonight. We've even attracted the Police and Crime Commissioner, so we must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. But you do look a bit lonely down there, Rupert, on your own. But um, I have picked up a few facts. Those of you who know me well, um, I do like useless information. And I picked up a, a little note here about useless information about the reign of Queen Elizabeth. Apparently in her reign, she received more than 3.75 million letters. The approximate number of guests she hosted at garden parties, 1.5 million people. 404,500 people, the number of official honors the Queen bestowed by her Diamond Jubilee. Over 90,000 Christmas puddings gifted to her staff. 50,000 for the number of people who attended banquets, lunches, dinners, receptions and garden parties at Buckingham Palace hosted by the Queen, hosted in an average year. More than 45,000 Christmas cards sent by the Queen 
and the Duke of Edinburgh join her reign. 23,226 days, 16 hours and approximately 30 minutes, the Queen's time on the throne when she passed Queen Victoria's record and became the nation's longest reigning monarch in 2015. Over 660 investitures personally held by the Queen since the start of her reign. 599, the number of charities, organizations, and military regiments which the Queen was served patron in her Blue Sapphire Jubilee year, more than 400 of which she had held since 1952. Mr. Mayor, 73% proportion of her life that Elizabeth II spent as Queen was when she reached Platinum Jubilee, 70 years on the throne. She owned more than 30 corgis, and I have actually stroked one corgi, by the way. I forgot to mention that. 30, the number of children who had her as their godmother. 25, her age, when she became uh, queen on the February 6, 1952. And 24, the number of different waxworks Madame Tussauds cre created as a monarch during her reign. And the list just goes on and on. She gave a wonderful service to this country, and um, yeah, we, we all reaping the benefit of that. Like I said, to me, she was a motherly figure. She was that step back figure. And let's just say one more time, thank you, Queen Elizabeth, but also long live the King. Thank you. Um, it's been really interesting listening to all what you've all had to say. Uh, I may look it, but no, I wasn't here when the King, when the Queen came on the throne. Um, just in case you, you know, you were wondering. But um, all our family have all been royalists. And uh, I suppose the main thing always stung out is Christmas Day. Didn't matter what happened, what was happening, you all had to the Queen's speech. Um, and I always remember my nan, wherever, on the television, whatever, as soon as the national anthem sounded, everybody stood. Um, when you were talking about televisions, uh, obviously our television was later than this, but I always remember that my dad never really watched the television because he spent most of his time at the back of the television, twiddling the valves as this picture went round and round and round. And uh, yeah, I think television now, it's not as comical as it was when we were younger. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, there's lots of... Yeah, those memories of early television, I think, were yeah fond memories, really. Um, moving on to now King Charles, uh, obviously where we are, the Beaver used to meet, and uh, so King Charles wasn't actually there at the start. He never was. Um, but uh, I do remember once actually holding the horse for him as a lad for him to actually get back on uh, when I think... Yeah, he called in the stackyard for a reason. <laughs> um, we did get the opportunity through the Rare Breeds Trust to go to uh, see um, Prince Charles, now the King, uh, and that was a really special occasion. Uh, also, he, he came to Long Clause and Dairy. Uh, and so I've had limited contact, actual contact with the Royals, but a, a big affection for them because they've had a big rock that we've been able to base our entire country on. That, um, yeah, when you look at other countries that haven't got that stability, um, I think that's why they really look to us uh, and so pleased that we have got that stability. So uh, that's it for me for now. And uh, I thank you all. Uh, I've just got one more thing to say. If we could proceed to the vote, please, for all members to wishing to uh, say, what is it now? To, let me get it right. Yeah, read the mo for the motion that Joe has written out, please. Thank you. Is that all in favour? Yeah, unanimous. Thank you very much. Just one last point then, please.
alongside the huge national loss and the tributes we have paid this evening, as a council, we have also suffered our own significant loss. We meet today for the first time since the tragic death of Councillor Melanie Miller, Nee Stedman. I'm sure members will join me in expressing our deep sadness at the loss of our friend and colleague who contributed so much to the borough and the people of Long Clawson. As I rise to conclude the meeting, I would like to ask you to join me in observing one minute silent reflection whilst we remember Melanie, who will be greatly missed. At the end of the silence, the procession to conclude the meeting will take place. Thank you.